God is gender neutral. Well, sort of. God's not a specific gender. In fact, God's not limited or defined accurately with any terms at all. But since we have to talk about God and relate to God in a meaningful way, we must use anthropomorphic terms to understand spiritual concepts. So when the Bible says the hand of God or that God spoke, it doesn't mean that God has a hand or a mouth. It's simply using terms that humans are familiar with to refer to spiritual abilities and tasks. Angels are another prime example of using anthropomorphism. They're described as having wings, but wings does not mean physical wings because angels are spiritual entities. Instead, when it says wings, it symbolizes an angel's constant yearning to spiritually ascend or fly up to be closer to God. Wings is a borrowed term to describe a spiritual desire and action. But all this begs the question, why is God so often described as a he in the Bible or in our prayer book? What does that symbolize? To find the answer to this question, we need to take a look at creation itself. In God's model of creation, there's a pattern of creating a giver and a receiver. For example, the sun and the moon can both provide light for the earth. The sun bestows light to the earth through giving off light. It's the giver. And the moon's light is a reflection from the sun, it's the receiver. Likewise, the organs of a male and female show the same pattern. The male is the giver, and the woman the receiver. That's just two examples, but many more can be found. Now we can start to answer our question using this pattern. There's also a dynamic between God and creation. God is the giver, and creation is the receiver. In our prayers, when we're asking God to bestow divine bounty upon the world, we refer to God in the masculine form, He, symbolizing His cosmic giving to us in creation who are on the receiving end. Often in the Bible or in prayer liturgy, God is bestowing commands or blessings to a creation that is on the receiving end. And in these instances, God is described in masculine terms. However, when we're describing how godliness is manifest in creation, that God's presence is revealed within the creation on the receiving end, we often use the term Shekhinah, which is a feminine term. Once again, God's neither male or female, it's just that these gender pronouns describe where the godly energy is in relation to us. It can be giving to creation or part of creation on the receiving end. Let's end on this inspiring thought. The premise of the messianic era is that godliness will be openly revealed throughout all of the world. This era of revelation can only be reached by performing God's commandments and helping to spiritually uplift every corner of the globe. Today, let's focus on doing one more divine act, allowing godliness to be apparent everywhere in a tangible way. If you like this video, please hit the subscribe button and that notification bell on the bottom right to keep up with videos as they come out. If you have friends or family that you think would benefit from watching this video, go ahead and share this video with them. If you have any questions for me about this topic or any questions in general, please feel free to leave a comment below and I'll make my best effort to respond to you directly. And finally, if you'd like to keep seeing more videos like this in the future, please consider donating to our Patreon page in the upper right. And have a great day.